This is a video for how to go about exporting your Revit project as an STL file for 3D printing purposes in Autodesk Revit. You will notice that in the view I have right here that I have a basic 3D kind of shed or a small cabin and I have some doors and I have a couple windows on the opposite side. And we're going to want to export this so we can 3D print it. To, three, to export as an STL file, you need to be sure that you are in your 3D view. If by chance you're in like a floor plan view right now, you can't export from that. So we want to make sure we're in our 3D view. And we're going to go to File, and we will go to Export, and we'll go to CAD Formats, and we're going to go to STL. STL stands for Stereolithic. For format, you can choose whichever format that you're in. I'm going to stay in binary. For resolution, uh, there's coarse, medium, and fine. Fine will take more memory, but it will give you the most definition. And then you can choose different types of units based upon what your 3D slicing software is and just whatever your personal preferences are. I'm going to keep feet and fractional inches, and I'm going to say save. Now, I've already saved this before this video, so I'm not going to say save. You can say save and choose where you save it. Then when you open it up within a 3D printing slicer software. I use Ultimaker Cura. I'm going to say open. And you'll notice that I have mine and it's, you know, it's pretty small right now. I have this magenta polylactic acid loaded in mine. You, know, you can come in and change yours, you know, for the sake of the video. I think I'm going to come in here for PLA and I'm going to go uh, white PLA. Let's see if it's a little bit easier to see. And I want to scale mine up. So for me, I'm going to come in and scale this. I'm going to go about 300% total. Let's scale this thing up and, you know, take a look at it. So within Ultimaker Cura, I can go to a 3D view here. Let's take a look. Now, the issue is when you 3D print is it will fill in all of these doors that you see here. And it's not going to be anything you could like see through. So like the windows on the opposite side, it looks like they're kind of filled in with, let's say, toothpaste or something like that. It's, it's not a bad thing if that's what you want, but you might just want openings in this so you can see inside. Now I've 3D printed one and I took the windows and the doors out and I just put some cuts in the side and rev it. Now I could have done a better job with scaling this one because it was a little thin over here on the side and I and taking the support material out um, I, I did a little bit of damage to it. You can kind of see that on the inside but if you scale yours up a little bit more make these thicker much uh, easier to not damage. I have some support material up here on top. But if I would have just left those doors and windows in, these just would have been filled in with what that door looked like. So you might think to yourself, you know, well, I'd kind of like to keep that in there. And all of that's fine, but it will make an issue for you when uh, you go into 3D print. So one thing you can do within Revit, if you if you say, you know what, I don't want to keep this door here, but I would kind of like to make an opening there. We can click on that door, and I'm just going to delete that door out of there. And I can say, you know, we're going to go up to openings, and I'm going to go to wall, and it's going to ask me to pick a wall. And I'm going to say, you know, this right here, this wall right here is what I want to draw on. And when I draw myself, you know, a little, let's say, rectangle here, that's going to just cut a hole out of the wall. It's like you took a chainsaw and just cut in and it allows someone to see inside the home. And then when you export this, you will just have these as openings. That's one of the reasons I needed support material when I 3D printed because you can't just print, you know, into thin air up here. I needed something to support that up. I used a Ultimaker breakaway support material. So when you go into 3D print, this would be gone, filled with support material, and you have to remove that. That's where I could have scaled mine up a little bit more to make things more robust. You know, so things like this would not have happened where I, you know, broke a little bit of the wall. But the cool part about that is, is, you know, kind of what I just showed you, you can kind of see it in an angle and that you can see that doorway there. I took the floor off the bottom of the print just so I could actually see up inside of it like that. I just removed that in a 3D view in Revit so we could see. So within Revit, you can export any one of your files as an STL file just by simply choosing the export option in your CAD formats and then you can choose your options from here. Within the STL export, there's something about specifying your STL settings. And there's an excellent web page right here to talk about what each one of these formats and resolutions are for and what they're utilized for. So this has been a video for how to go about exporting your Revit project as an STL file for 3D printing purposes in Autodesk Revit.